Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to have a play around making some paper buttons. So I recently watched a video of Louise at Junk Journal Arts um, channel and who made them from book pages. So I'll show you um, how Louise did that today. But just to put my spin on it, I like to add pops of colour into my journals. Uh, I work a lot with neutrals, yes, but I also then like to add pops of colour. Um, so I've also grabbed out some scraps of my scrapbook papers and, and did a few different ones, a few variety just to get into um, my stash. So all right, so let's get started. It's a bit of a process uh, with the gluing. So just grab um, a book that you've got out. If you don't have a book, then grab some pages, grab your glue stick. This one's got some photos in it that I wanna keep. So we'll just go over to um, the pages here. It's quite a well-used book, this one. Grab your glue stick, whichever type of glue stick you like. I like the Yoohoo sticks. And then just put glue on the whole page right to the edge one thing I will have to do though because it's got all this I'll just have to get rid of that because we want to glue them flat together so if you've recently torn some pages out and try and get rid of just that bulk in the middle. It won't matter because you won't be using the absolute edges, but you want it to glue fairly flat. Then you put your page down. Now Louise used a roller for hers, but you can use just your bone scorer. So if you've got one of these, just to adhere it flat because we're going to be cutting or punching out circles. So we want our glue to distribute and adhere fairly evenly. Now I like three pages in mine uh, because we're going to be using the scrapbook as a fourth um, layer on this. If your page, your book pages are really thin, this one, this one's not too bad, then use more layers, totally up to you. But you don't want it too thick where your punch won't punch it out because you don't want to break your punch either. And then just glue that down again. So that'll be three pages that I have stuck together there. I will tear it out of the book. Put the book to the side. And then when you've got it down flat like that, just give it another go over couple of different ways and now I'll grab some scraps of some patterns pattern paper that you think you would like to see as a button I quite like the check and the flowers on this one and then we will glue it down So one thing I did notice with my first batch that when I used the scrapbook paper, I don't know whether it's because I didn't have enough glue on, but some of them did actually come off the page. I had to re-glue them, which is not, not a problem. Um, I may not have pushed it down firm enough like that. And then I've got some old weathered wood here. I really love that too. So we'll stick that one down. If you've got script, these edges, I've got some where I haven't um, punched the holes in them yet, but I actually stamp dates on them just for something different or just a number because we all like to put numbers into our clusters or our decoration. So basically any pattern paper that you think will look great in a button and then you can make your buttons any size you like to i'm using a three quarters of an inch 
punch for mine, but then you can go bigger if you want to. The principle of the making is all the same. I'd be really interested to see how that one comes up. way to if you're working with um, strips like this it's a good way to get some variety just off the one lot of book pages if you're just using the standard book page you could add some inks to it and color it and get a bit of variety that way So you can see the it's it's quite thick. You can't like I said, you can go thicker, but you want your punch to be able to go through it. So I'm gonna put that off to dry because your any punches that you use won't like um, if the glue's still wet, you'll actually end up clogging everything together. So make sure it's completely dry before you um, punch it but I do have some that are already dry which I have um, done some buttons off previously so this is our book page I've I've cut it down because I've, I've used it so we would get our I'm using a three-quarter punch which gives you this size button but you can go bigger if you want to or you can go smaller I've also got a um, a one inch square because I thought maybe some square buttons would look pretty good too or even just um, tiles so you can see that that thickness um, you don't want to go any thicker than that because of your punch so I will turn those into square buttons as well and then we've got our this is our three uh, layers of book page and our scrapbook paper over the top and then we just punch them out grab some this one's great because it's got the little measuring tape on it which I actually like to get my punch doesn't like that one for some reason I'll go on to the next piece and it's a bit thicker it's not liking that either so maybe I've gone a bit thick on that one let's go to the just the plain cardstock uh, might be just the edge of that it doesn't like get some map map paper there and you do have little circles flying everywhere as you can see And you can ink these too. So when you ink them, you can ink them with different um, inks. Now we are putting the range of glossy accents over the top. So I'm actually inking them with a distress ink rather than the distress oxides. Um, you can use the distress oxides as well, but it may bleed a little bit, which could be pretty cool too. It'll give it a, um, a vintage look. You can see that one got a bit of pattern on that one. Some roses. That one nearly hit you guys in the camera. Well, you can punch them into your hand like that. Do a couple of book pages. And then I've got this beautiful decorative, it's, it, I think it's, it's like a Celtic pattern, absolutely beautiful, um, that will punch a few out. I've already done a few with that, as you'll see, those ones there, they're just beautiful.
And then these ones here were just like a linen um, look, but they're, they're flat. It was a cardstock that I had, so I wanted some plain ones as well, which you'll see that I've got the green ones there. And I've got the beigey ones there. And I've inked around those, so you'll see that there's a little bit, um, it highlights it a little bit more. So I'll cut a couple more of those ones. I really like those, and I want to have a play around with different inks on the edge of those. And being relatively plain, they're going to go in any type of journal that you um, have. And then a couple of green ones. All right, so when we've got our um, buttons punched out like that, put the gloss ones to the side so they don't get mixed up. We want to punch holes in them. So if you've got a, a hand punch, so I've got this stamping up one and it's relatively, if you can see that, it's not overly big because you, you don't want them too big. Obviously, you don't want them too small either. And then you just sort of um, try and eyeball it. You'll get a bit of, you'll get into a bit of a rhythm. You don't want the holes too far apart. So it looks like a button. So if we do, let's do a script one. Might go the holes differently. And you'll you'll know with your own tool, once you do a couple where to line it up. There you go. If you don't have a punch, and this is a method I haven't tried, but I'll give it a go now for you. If you've got your book or something or a piercing mat underneath, then you could put your button on there. And if you had an awl, which I don't know where mine is. Let me have a, here it is. So if you've got an awl, you might be able to just start the hole. bring him back so start the hole like that and start the hole like that and this is an experiment so it may or may not work and then pierce it through like that and pierce it through like that so you'll still get a button effect if you don't have the punches now you will have a little bit of a risen um, thing at the back if you can see that because we've punched it that way you may be able to just snip them off to flatten it out and then take that right through and right through so think outside the square guys if you don't have have the punch then you definitely can do it with an awl or um, if you've got like a pokey tool which is similar with the sharp um, bit on the end I've also got this um, EK Success button punch. Now it come in a set of two. So this one punches the holes and then there was a circle punch, which I don't have with me at the moment, but the three quarters that I'm using does the same thing. And I'll show you how that works. So we punch our holes like this. See how it's got the four, four holes there. And then we just line it up like that. And then we've got our button, which has got four holes. So that's another, and that's actually quicker than punching, punching the holes by hand. So that'll give you, let me get one I've cut. So they're the three different looks. That's with the, the punch, that's with the awl, and that one's with the actual button punch. But they all look like buttons to me. So whichever method you've got at home right now if you wanted to have a go at them then definitely um, use whatever you've got now this one here i might just punch a double hole in so this is our square buttons 
and that's going to have to ink that so you can see it. Um, that's going to look really cool as well. Just adds adds a bit more interest to what you normally have. So you could sew that in. Once you um, put your glossy accents on it, it will highlight it even more. You may want to not make it into a button and just add the glossy accents on there just as a tile that you want to put on your clusters and that as well. That's another, another way um, to do it. So I'll just punch a few more holes and then I'll show you uh, my method of using glossy ac accents on these. So you don't have to, once you've... Um, glossed them they're actually quite delicate you know and I'm all sticking together um, and this will save you from having to move it twice might do a couple of the numbers that I've got and once again these are from the side of the book page actually I might do the holes off to the side from the number so we're not punching too much of the number out they're just a lot of fun you can of course just use coffee dyed paper layer it and then stamp you could do a whole collage stamp and then cut them out so you would have a similar effect to that and then just punch that's a Kaiser Craft um, cardstock, but um, similar effect to that. Get your stamps out if you didn't have any patterned paper and make some vintage buttons. Do a couple of the book page ones. Buttons look good over, um, so I guess in a sense they're faux buttons, but the beauty of these is they're flat, so they're not going to add bulk to your journal, whereas a if you think of it, a wooden button is, is three or four times the thickness of that, and it adds bulk onto your page. So unless you're putting it on your front cover, it matters when it comes to how much bulk you're putting throughout your journal as to how wide your crocodile mouse is going to be at the end. All right, so then what I get, I have these trays for when I use glossy accents. And then I have just a bit of a plastic down. Now, this is just a snap lock bag, but you can have any type of plastic down there. And the reason I say plastic is because if you do dribble over the side a little bit, it's going to be easy to peel your project off. So when you've got it on there, if you go over the edge and it was on standard paper, it would stick and then you'd have to try and tear it off and neaten it up. This way it just peels straight off the plastic. And if you had a dribble out the side, which you shouldn't do, um, you'll be able to just cut it off. So if we layer these into our tray... I'm going to ink them before I put the glossy accents down. Just push those ones off to the side. That we want our square one. I might, might do two of the square buttons. Now I'm using um, what's called a finger dauber. I find because they're little, it's just easier um, for me to not get as much ink on my hands. But if you've only got the bigger ones, that's fine as well. And try and do around the sides because you will have a white side and you don't want to see white. Sometimes just going round the edge like that without even distressing it, you get a good enough um, border on there anyway.
these are so much fun and you know they're handmade so you get a lot of satisfaction out of making something by hand and from what I know in my shopping journeys you can't buy these on you know Timu, AliExpress, Amazon you can buy stickers of course but you can't buy these nice thick paper buttons I would love to know in the comments guys if you've tried something like this before or if you've been doing them for a while Lisa's video I think she made it two years ago so you know um, the idea has been around for a while but I guess just because I follow follow her and love her videos uh, she does a lot with ink and that she's an awesome creator so I'll put her channel in the comments for you to check out Once you you know you glue all your pages together and, and it dries it really doesn't take long to to make a batch of these I'm going to have lots to play with all right so that one's there so the reason I like the Ranger glossy accents is um, it dries really clear Plus, it's got a really thin nozzle. So when we're working with um, little things uh, like this, we, we have a lot of control. So I would just get a pair of um, tweezers or you could use your, your awl, something really fine just to hold on the edge. And now I will put my glasses on. Just to hold on the edge because you, you just want to maximise the surface area that you're putting the glossy accents on and then it's just a matter of I had this out yesterday I might have to stick a pin in there a paper clip This little hard knob caught on the end oh that's it so I've just cut the the tip off it wouldn't come out so yeah just um, hold it down and then work your glossy accents now if you go right to the edge that's fine and then pull it back towards the center it will not leak over the edge so we'll hold it down there So it is a, um, it's thin enough to work with like that, but it's also thick enough to pull on your project. So you're not having it run everywhere. Like I said, play around with your inks. You'll get some really good effects. This one here, I've used the Distress Ink, but have a go with the oxides. See how they come up. Do one or two. Use some different colors. Just to get a bit of color happening. You'll see fragments of my finger dauber on the plastic there so it looks like it's just about had it if once they start falling apart on you like that but I was going around the rough edges too so edges can be quite sharp so they can tear your sponges a bit 
and as you can see from this it is a quite a quick process If you don't have um, a small enough hand punch to make these holes, you've got a, a bigger one. Make your buttons bigger. Trial and error. If you don't have a three quarters of an inch circle punch, you might only have an inch. Punch the inch out. If you don't have any punches at all, you might want to have a go at hand cutting the circles or the squares even. Work around with what you've got, guys. Don't don't go out and buy um, tools just to make one project unless you know that you're going to use them time and time again. But you can see the glossy accents gives it like a glass effect on top and it just gives you another dimension there as well. So I'll just bring all these ones that I've um, previously made. Let me get rid of this striped paper. Put them on... So these are all the ones that I made previously. So I like to dry them overnight. They will be dry within a couple of hours anyway, or at least touch dry within a couple of hours, depending on, I guess, your climate that you're in. But you can see there's some great variety there. If I add in the numbers that I've just done as well, then we'll get a... Actually, that one's not done. We'll get a... Um, a really good variety in there and the ones the ones that I've cut out today ready to go so that one for example that's the back of the green that I did but that's the plain book page you might change your mind and you might say oh actually I don't want to go with that one and put a stamp on it if you've got some little tiny flower or bee stamps or little words then definitely um, definitely use them but I hope that's given you some great ideas today, guys. You're probably thinking, oh, what am I going to use, use them for? But, you know, they will go, um, they'll go in the centre of a flower, for example. They'll go on some lace. You may want to stitch it as well, stitch it onto your, your clusters and things like that. But have fun with them. Give them a go, definitely. I'm going to be making some more because I want to get... Um, not only some variety in there but I want to get lots of them because when I use them I'll probably use them in threes you know and I like things in threes so it might be you know down a belly band um, you know across the bottom of a tuck or something like that you might only want to use two or you may only want to use one but but they're a lot of fun um, very relatively easy to do put some time away to let them dry before you um, definitely before you gloss gloss them and um, I will finish these ones off as well and um, once I do I'll get them um, into my stash as well but thanks for your time today guys um, I hope you liked the video today and got some inspiration out of it um, and are keen to give it a go I would love to know in the comments um, if you are going to give it a go or if you have um, done a similar process in the past anyway enjoy the rest of your day guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks bye